Good morning, all you wonderful people tuning in one more time to our Christmas challenge. I'm calling this Free Stuff. I could have picked so many different titles, but I'm calling it Free Stuff. As you're going to see today, we're going to be talking about the free favor of God. And it was part of the original message that the angels brought. Remember my challenge to you, if you've been tuning in the last couple of weeks, 365 days of joy. Remember when those angels came down and they tore open the heavens and they said, you know, that, uh, let me read it to you in case you haven't followed the last couple of weeks. It says, um, it says, but the angel said to them in Luke chapter 2, verse 10, do not be afraid for behold, uh, I bring you, we bring you good news of a great joy. Bit of exaggeration there. No, that's what they said. Good news of great joy, which will come to all the people, all the people. And then it goes on, it says, and suddenly there appeared even more angels, an army of the troops of heaven, a heavenly knighthood, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest. Now, I, my challenge to you is, were they overselling the deal? Would you be willing to uh, just grab a hold of this original, this is the most original message of what the gospel was supposed to be all about? Are you willing to maybe adjust a few things in your life and uh, I challenge you for 365 days a year? And you may you may fail. I, I'm sure I failed a couple times this week where I didn't remember these scriptures and something pressure came upon me and I'm just like, oh man, but I made a decision. I'm getting back in there. And uh, we, we shared even on Sunday that did you know that your body doesn't know the difference between fake laughing and real belly laughing? And you can start out with ha, 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 and start laughing. And, and all of a sudden, you know, your, your, your whole system, this is a study that was done, starts uh, feeling more joyful as <laughs> maybe as you start laughing and rejoicing in the matter. And so I'm challenging myself. I'm challenging you. You know, Christmas is not about that fat guy in a red suit. Sorry if there's any kids watching. I'm sorry to, there is, um, there is a St. Nicholas, but it wasn't quite the deal that we made it or the commercialization but i'm talking about the original gospel uh the good news the christmas story the christ mass story of a savior that was born a savior and so right from the very beginning from the angels you hear a message of great joy amen and what's that great joy all about you know didn't god come down and see a whole bunch of sinners and evil people and what in the world is it we shouldn't even be smiling because we're so full of sin you know god shouldn't be smiling but here he is giving us f favor let me read it to you and the, and right after the angels appeared the next verse verse 14 write it down it says glory to god in the highest heaven and on earth peace um, to men with whom he is well pleased of goodwill and of his favor we're talking about favor today. Favor, 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 favor. And uh, the angels were receded back into heaven and the shepherds, they were the original uh, carriers of this message. Now these weren't just dumb shepherds, they were actually tending to sheep that were used for temple service. So I believe they connected the dots. They, were, they knew something more than what uh, we thought. I always thought they were just dumb shepherds, you know. <laughs> If you could spell shepherd, you could get a job out in the field somewhere. That's kind of what, what I thought way back then. But I realized these guys knew something about the lambs that they were preparing for temple service. And so they come flying into town. I'll pick it up in verse 16. So they went uh, with haste, flying, haste. And uh, by searching for, uh, they found Mary and Joseph and the baby that was in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known that what has been told to them about the child. So they were the first evangelists with this new, exciting message. Hallelujah. There's none of this, you know, judgment and condemnation. Why do you guys sin all the time? It was the message of hope to stop you from sinning. The Bible says this here, the goodness of God leads to repentance. The goodness of God. So he's coming down here with favor and with blessings. We're going to read a lot of scriptures on that. And guess what happens to people? They change because of the goodness of God, not because of their own efforts. 
You can't save yourself. The goodness of God, the father who looked out to see his prodigal son returning, who waited at the gates all the time in the fence and he's leaning over the fence. This is a day my son comes home. And when he comes home, he wanted no conversation about, you know, how many prostitutes he slept with or, you know, what you do with all the money. It was all about give him a robe, give him a ring, give him new shoes. All very important representatives of what happened to you and me in life. Did the, did, did, the, did the son do anything to deserve that? Absolutely not. But he changed because of the love of the father. And that's the gospel story. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him, what would happen? Would not perish. They would receive eternal life. How would they receive eternal life? He would come inside them. He would come. Not, okay, I won't do this sin anymore. I won't do this, won't do that. That happens automatically because you love the Savior and what he did for you. It's all about Jesus and what he did for you. Well, the angels came with all excitement. They came to Mary and they're just like, wow, you know, this is what happened. And in verse um, 18 or 19, it says, but Mary... And was keeping within herself all the things, all the sayings, weighing them and pondering them in her heart. So think about it. Um, the angels were carrying the message. Mary had an angel appear to her and she said, be it unto me. And now the shepherds are coming and she's like, ponder, ponder, ponder. She's sitting there pondering all the good reports. Why? She's a 15 year old, 14 year old girl. She, <coughs> hello, you know, hello. <laughs> You know, here is an angel appearing and then the shepherds had angels appearing to them and they're saying this is going to be the savior of the world. This is going to be um, um, the one that is going to redeem mankind. And we can we'll see if we get back to even Simeon. Well, well we're here right now. Let's let's take this. Just go down to verse 27 of the same chapter, chapter two. And this is eight days after the shepherds appeared. Eight days. It's the day of um going to the temple and presenting the baby uh, to uh, be circumcised and prompted by the Holy Spirit, there's a guy by the name of Simeon. So he wakes up in the morning, the Spirit says, go to the temple. He comes to the temple enclosure and when the parents saw, uh, brought in the little child Jesus to, for him, um, what was customary according to the law, Simeon took the baby and said, in his arms and praised God and thanked him and said, Oh, now, Lord, you, uh, you are releasing your servant to depart. Leave this world in peace according to your word. So Simeon knew a lot more than Mary and Joseph that now I can leave. Why can't he leave now? Because he had a deal with God. God spoke to him and said, you know, I'm going to show you salvation uh, to all mankind. Remember, I talked about the free stuff, the free things, and we're going to get into especially the word favor today. And so, and now, Lord, you can release your servant to depart, leave the world in peace according to your word. For with my own eyes, I have seen your salvation, which is healing, safety, soundness, deliverance, and security. I'm telling you, salvation is a gift that keeps on giving. Well, I'll be putting away our Christmas stuff here in no time, but I'm challenging you to keep it alive all the days of the year. 365 days of the year, keep the word salvation, keep the word joy alive, keep it alive. It's not, this is not hype, this is the gospel. Don't let it slip. Can't, what about being sad and all that kind of stuff? Well, Jesus wept, yeah. He wept over people that didn't want the message. You know, Jesus wept. The Bible tells me this here, that we're supposed to have days of heaven on the earth. So if you're going to go to heaven one day and you're going to be moping and groping there, they're going to kick you out. <laughs> no, they can't, but they should. Anyways, it's days of heaven on the earth. Let that register in your ears, in your eye gates, into your heart. Days of heaven on the earth is what we are planning or what they planned for right from the original beginning, right? That's why the angels were so excited. We're coming to bring mankind days of heaven on the earth. Simeon was saying, hey, now I can die. I can go to heaven because I see days of heaven. This wonderful Savior who's bringing salvation, uh, who 
Um, and again, the first few lessons of Mary and Joseph, they're not going to get into, you know, he's going to die on the cross. In fact, even all the way to Matthew chapter 16, the disciples didn't even know that Jesus is going to die and go to the cross. He had to tell them, guys, I'm going to die and go to the cross. Then Peter says, be it far from you or pity yourself. It's not going to happen to you. They actually thought that Jesus was here permanently and going to set up his government. He was teaching good. He was healing people. They All they wanted, one more thing. Do one more thing for us. Kick the Romans in the head. Get rid of the Romans. You know, and again, what, what, were the, what was the big deal with the Romans? Well, I, uh, let me fill you in about a certain government in uh, North Korea right now. Did you know that if your house was on fire in North Korea right now, that uh, if you didn't save the pictures of Kim Jong-un and the other guy, I forgot his name, if you didn't save those out of the fire, but save your family, that you would be executed. I mean, you talk about craziness. If you fell asleep when he's preaching <laughs> or sharing his message, execution. I mean, that's nothing to laugh about, sorry, but I, I have people fall asleep when I preach sometimes. But uh, can, can you imagine that? Execution. Uh, there's so many horrible things that they do. You talk about a repressive government. Why am I sharing that? Because that's what the disciples, you see them even asking in Acts chapter 1, aren't you going to do something about the Romans? Are you going to do set up your government? What's wrong? No, he came with favor to all mankind, which was internal, that even though there's Romans there, or there's sickness there, or there's disease there, or there's lack of finances there, He's going to create days of heaven on the earth by giving you more than enough. He, salvation means healing, safety, soundness, deliverance, and security in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Even the Bible says in Psalm 23 that uh, healing is a children's bread. He sets bread. He sets up a table in the middle of our enemies. We have a power and authority over them. We occupy till he comes. That is the gospel message that our loving Heavenly Father sent his son Jesus, who would eventually die on the cross. But the whole gospel message is about bringing the favor, bringing the goodness of God, bringing new life to those that are uh, hungering and thirsting after righteousness, those that desire him. He came to his own and his own received them not. So he came to us Gentiles and we got drafted in and we can be, be by accepting Jesus Christ, Romans 10, 9 and 10 as our Lord. We get the full benefit deal. We, be, we get the inheritance. We are partakers. The people don't, don't understand this, but we are partakers of his divine natures. Now, when we have done that, accepted the gospel, now are we called the sons of God. We have God's nature now on the inside of us. We are, uh, as it says, Jesus is not ashamed to call us his brother. Okay, let's talk about some of the wonderful favorite scriptures. In, um, in Luke chapter 4, 18, remember Jesus Yes, Christmas is great, the little baby, but you know what? That baby is not going to save anybody. He's going to he's going to need his diapers changed. He's going to need to be trained. He didn't come out speaking Hebrew from the womb. He was a baby. And that baby though was going to grow up and be the savior of the world. About 30 years later, he comes on a scene and now he's ready. He's found himself in the word of God and he's going to be what all men need, the savior. He's going to save us. From the world healing safety soundness deliverance and security our natures are changed we get born again by the spirit of god hallelujah well this is what he came and proclaimed in his first message he says in luke 4 18 to proclaim the acceptable year the year of the lord the day when salvation and the free remember i'm calling this free to you free favors of god profusely abound. And I know not right now, you're probably saying, I have so many free things that in my house. I, I understand the gospel message. Thank you. My house is full. Is that you? Well, <laughs> if it is, then you're supposed to be blessing your neighbors and your friends, everybody you meet. If you have too much money because God's been so good to you, you got to be blessing your neighbors and your friends and the building orphanages. But I know most people are, are living way below the standards that Jesus Christ implemented desired for us as believers desired that was this is the message 
I'm telling you, this was not a fake, phony advertisement. In fact, I just showed my secretary an advertisement put on by, a, um, uh, I won't name the department or the lumber yard. It, it, it shows a 15 by 8 shed that's going for $89. I sent it to my son and I'm saying, is this real? you got to be kidding. It says it's $680 reduced. So I'm like, no, I don't know when it's smells too good to be true i'm, I'm going to follow up on that after this here but something smelling a little bit too good to be true well I, I know a lot of people believe the gospel is too good to be true but it is true it is the gospel which means help me out the good news the good news not you rotten sinners why did you sin it's i am coming with life and life more abundantly so, the favor of God. Watch this out of Isaiah chapter 61. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The year of his favor. Instead of your former shame, you shall have a twofold recompense. Instead of this honor and reproach, you shall have your portion. Therefore, uh, in their land, they shall process double, or yes, possess double, what they had forfeited, Everlasting, everlasting joy shall be theirs. How many days of the year? Everlasting joy. This is not talking about heaven. This is God's desire, number one, for Israel. But you and I got drafted in. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. And their offspring shall be known among the nations and their descendants among the people. All who see them in their prosperity. Don't ever mock the prosperity message because you won't have any of it. But God desires you to be prosperous so that you can give again and be blessed on this earth. Days of heaven. Uh, I read it again. And all who see their prosperity will recognize and acknowledge that they are the people whom the Lord has blessed. Favor. Favor abounding. Favor. Can you say it with me? Favor. Oh, I don't know about that, Pastor. Have you got a Bible? Have you found it in your Bible? It's life to all that find it and health and healing to all their flesh. That's what he says about physical healing. But how about the favor, the free things that he already gave you? Why did we leave out the gospel me message and, and make it some kind of a insipid, you know, kind of a floppy thing that, that uh, you know, nobody really wants half the time? But if they could see the favor of God on you, your neighbor is like, wow, I know somebody blessed you. I know, I know you didn't. How did you get this? Jesus. And what are you going to do with it? Well, I'm going to hear from the Spirit of God because he definitely wants me to give so that it, to other people so that it is given back even more. He can trust me with it. All right, watch this here. Um, when does it begin? It began when Jesus proclaimed in Luke 4, 21. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ear. Which one? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, which talks about free favor. Ephesians 2, verse 7, that he might clearly demonstrate, clearly demonstrate the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing riches, riches of his free grace and unmerited favor. Psalms 41, 11. By this I know that your favor and the light in me because my enemies do not triumph over me. How do you like to go to bed every day saying, you know what? My enemies did not triumph over me. I triumph today because of Jesus. Is this gospel too good to be true? That's why it's called the good gospel. Amen. Read Luke chapter number two. See what we left. See, see what we left behind when we uh, follow some religious teaching that is not in the Bible at all. Psalm 30, verse 5. His favor, uh-oh, is for a lifetime. His favor, say that with me. His favor is for a lifetime. Not just for, well, you know, there's the little, you know, the valleys and the heights and the, you know, you got to go through the valleys and all that. Really? Really? And what are we going to do in the valleys? Pick the lilies? No, in the valleys, we're going to praise God like Paul and Silas and see jails breaking open. We'll see, uh, which is, which is a, um, for us, anytime there's hardships in life, uh, in the midst, Thessalonians chapter 5, 
It says that in all things give thanks. Why? It allows the favor to carry you through, the blessings of God to come on the scene and fix that situation, whatever it is. Oh yeah, the enemy's going to try. He did try with Paul. Many, many afflictions are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of some of them, out of them all. I'm not finished reading here, so don't close your Bible. In fact, I'm going to tell you what, if you want one of these sheets on the favor of God, you phone my office at 862-3044, and, and I will give you, uh, f uh, uh, send you a sheet of all the favor scriptures that I have here before me. Psalm 55, 22, cast your burden on the Lord, release the weight, release the weight of it, and he will sustain you. He will never, never allow the consistently righteous to be moved, made to slip, fall, or fail. Remember, Jesus is the word. This is good stuff. This is the word. Don't allow so-and-so to tell you, you know what, that's too good to be true, because I'm giving you the Bible. Amen. Psalm 97, verse 11. The irresistible joy which comes from uh, consciousness of his favor and protection. That's what he's all about. So don't give up in times of trouble. Do this here. Day one. Favor of God with the possibility of showers of blessings. Ezekiel 34, verse 26. I will cause the showers to come down in his season there shall be showers of blessing. Ezekiel 34, 26. Next day, with the favor of God is coming with the possibility of restoration of everything stolen from you. Twofold recompense, they call that. Day three, favor of God with the possibility of raises, promotions, and better jobs. Day four, the favor of God with the possibility of income from unexpected sources. Haha, <laughs> we did that last night. We're, we're jumping up and down. Unexpected sword. Money cometh. Amen. Now again, if you take that last sentence, say, all he talks about is money, you're wrong. Amen. That's, don't just take that segment. But it's, if you leave that out, you're missing what God wants to do in your life. Day five, favor of God with victories over great adversity. Day six, favor of God with increased prosperity. So that is the six-day forecast that you can follow this week going forward because that's exactly what the angels were talking about and promoting as this glorious gospel anyways please call us we'll send you one of these sheets of the favor of god 250-862-3044 have an amazing rest of your day